So the question is, is this bad news for NVIDIA? All right, so uh, here's, <clears throat> here's the story I want to dig into. You know, in our na last pod, we talked about China's uh, sort of incredibly expanding role. So China is set to limit access to NVIDIA's H200 chips despite uh, Trump's export approval. So, you know, President Trump says to NVIDIA, OK, you can export these. And now <clears throat> the China leadership is, no, 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 you can't buy them. You need to buy Chinese made uh, and, you know, uh, GPUs. Uh, fascinating, right? It's, this is propping up its own chip economy. Uh, I think it's a smart move on China's behalf. This is so fun and annoying at the same time to watch, you know, this is pure protectionism. You, the U S never did it before. And now we're, now we're playing the game, but you know, what happens is a country invents something like an LCD TV or a car or, a, you know, whatever. And another country says, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to protect the home market. We're going to manufacture our own. Then we're going to dump it on your market cheaply. And we're going to dump it until your companies collapse and the venture capitalists all run away. And then we're going to price it up. <laughs> so what we did is we embargoed the chips from China and they're like, oh, shite, we need to build our own whole supply chain. And as soon as they get it up and running, we're going to say, oh, no, no, it's OK. Now we're going to actually allow you <laughs> to buy the H200s. And that entire thing you just built makes no economic sense. And so China is saying, all right, I, I see what you're doing here. I've played this game for a long time. We're not going to we're not going to buy them. Like, but why? You know, it's an incredible buy why why would you not allow us to buy them because we we already made a massive investment in our own fabs we're going to have to keep subsidizing that to get this up and running because we know what you're doing here you're going to let us buy them right up until our stuff collapses and then you're going to cut it off again so this it's, is the, it's, it's just, a trust issue <laughs> yeah. big trust well issue. there's it's no trust, trust at all between the u.s uh, and china right now well sure. this the same thing happened right the japanese came over during trump's first administration and spent a lot of time negotiating a trade deal and and then in uh, just a few months ago, Trump, um, the, the administration canceled that trade deal. And the Japanese are like, we're not negotiating another one because we don't know which way up is anymore. And every single time it changes completely. So there's no trade deal. And this is really a, a, a big problem going forward. And I, I think what China is saying is we don't want to play that game. Well, there's no doubt that the outcome is look two completely separate ecosystems. Europe is kind of a wild card. It's interesting. And, and, and so is India. It's kind of a wild card right now. But there's no doubt the U.S. ecosystem is going to grow completely independent of the China ecosystem because there's no chance of reestablishing trust after that chip embargo. You know, there's like no way yep, that that's, that's right. going to get, get mended. That's right. So sovereign data center, AI compute, to Alex's point. It's, it's, it's a new, it's almost like a second Cold War. It, it's it's a, a world that we move to where there are spheres of influence and spheres of fab and spheres of compute and the decoupling happened. China is set to limit access to NVIDIA's H200 chips despite Trump's export approval. President Trump says to NVIDIA, you can export these, but China's leadership says, no, you can't buy them. You need to buy Chinese made GPUs. Think about what China is actually seeing right now. They probably spent a hundred billion dollars on building their own chip industry from scratch. New factories, new equipment, training thousands of engineers, building relationships with suppliers, all because the US said you can't buy our chips anymore. Now those factories are finally starting to produce chips that actually work, not as good as Nvidia's yet, but good enough. Chinese companies are using them now and the supply chain is coming together. Another one or two years and they might actually be starting to get competitive with Nvidia. Right at that exact moment, the US shows up and says, hey, actually you can buy Nvidia chips again now. China looks at this and sees a trap because here's what happens if they say yes. Chinese tech companies immediately stop buying Chinese chips and switch back to Nvidia. Why wouldn't they do that? Nvidia chips are faster and better. Every Chinese AI company would make that switch overnight. So now all those new Chinese chip factories have no customers. They've just spent billions investing in production lines and are basically taking an ax to their demand. That could start a cascade of engineers getting laid off and the Chinese chip industry shrinking or at least suffering. But then what happens to China? Maybe two years later, the US changes its mind again. New policy, new restrictions. Sorry, you can't buy NVIDIA chips again. 
And now China is right back where they started, except worse because they killed their own chip industry by switching to NVIDIA. This already happened once. The US already cut them off. They already had to scramble to build alternatives. Now the US wants them to abandon those alternatives right when they're starting to pay off. The pattern is obvious. Imagine you own a restaurant and you rely on one supplier for all your ingredients. Then one day that supplier says, we're not selling to you anymore. So you then spend a year building relationships with new suppliers, completely restructuring your kitchen, training your staff on new ingredients. It's expensive and painful, but you make it work, or at least you're trying to make it work. Then right when everything is finally starting to get moving, the original supplier comes back and says, hey, we'll sell to you again. Would you switch back? Probably not. Because what happens if they cut you off again in six months time? You'd be right back in crisis mode, except now you've also destroyed all those new supplier relationships you just built. China has learned the hard way that relying on US chips is dangerous. Building their own chips is expensive and the quality isn't there yet, but at least they control it. Nobody can take that away from them. The timing of the US offer makes it even more suspicious. Why now? The timing suggests the goal is specifically to kill the Chinese chip industry before it matures. The trust destruction goes way beyond semiconductors. When countries can't trust each other on trade, everything else gets harder. So that's why China is refusing NVIDIA. But what does this mean for the global technology landscape going forward? Alex said there's no doubt the outcome is two completely separate ecosystems. The US ecosystem is going to grow completely independent of the Chinese ecosystem. If you're a tech company today, you're about to face a interesting choice. Do you build your products for the US market or for the Chinese market? You can't easily do both anymore because the underlying technology is completely different. Imagine you're developing an AI application. In the US, you build it on NVIDIA chips using CUDA and deploy it on AWS or Google Cloud. All of that is optimized to work together. You can hire engineers who know these tools. You can find documentation and examples everywhere. Everything works smoothly. Now, if you want to sell that same application in China, you have to rebuild it from scratch. Different chips means different optimization. Different frameworks means rewriting the code. Different cloud platforms means redesigning architecture. You're basically building two completely separate products. Most companies can't afford to do that, so they pick one market and ignore the other. That means innovation that happens in one ecosystem doesn't spread to the other. A breakthrough in Beijing doesn't help companies in San Francisco. A new technique developed in Silicon Valley doesn't reach Shanghai. This is really inefficient compared to how tech development usually works. Usually the best ideas spread globally within months. Someone publishes a research paper, other teams implement it. Improvements happen quickly because everyone can build on everyone else's work. That process just broke. The economic waste will be staggering. Right now, researchers in both countries are probably working on similar problems using different approaches because they can't share results effectively. Engineers are solving the same bugs twice. All that duplicated effort slows down everyone's progress. So why is China still making this choice? If Chinese companies go back to depending on US chips, they're betting their entire ecosystem on continued access to American technology. That's a bet they've already lost once. It's too much power to give to a potential adversary. So China is willing to accept years of slower growth and high costs in exchange for building their own complete technology stack. Then it's actually fascinating considering Europe because they're large enough to potentially avoid choosing. European companies could try to maintain access to both ecosystems. European cloud providers could offer services that work with both US and Chinese chips. Europe could position itself as neutral ground where both systems work. But maintaining that neutrality gets harder every year. The technical differences between the ecosystems keep growing. The political pressure to choose sides keeps increasing. At some point, Europe might be forced to pick one or the other despite wanting to stay neutral. India is in a similar position, but with different advantages. India could potentially play both sides longer than most countries. A lot of people want to understand AI properly, but feel overwhelmed by the jargon. I created a structured course that explains the fundamentals in simple language and then moves into more advanced topics. Once you join, you get lifetime access to all current and future modules. Just a note, 
the price increases as new modules are added. So this is the cheapest it ever will be. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.